Mountain State Mysteries contains adult content that may not be suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. I'm your host, Mark. And I'm Courtney. And this is Mountain State Mysteries. The case we have for you today is about a woman who was turning her life around for the better. This is the story of Chandice Cochran. Chandice Cochran was born on April 27, 1991. Growing up, Chandice had the picture-perfect childhood while growing up in Braxton County, West Virginia, with her mother Becky and her brother Bert. Growing up, Chandice and Bert had an unbreakable bond. Sadly, addiction doesn't care about a bond or a fairy tale childhood. On Father's Day in 2010, Bert sadly passed away due to an overdose at the age of 21. Becky told Eyewitness News, WCHS, that Bert acted like her father. He took care of her and protected her. The death of her brother started the downfall in Chandice's life. After an emergency surgery, she was prescribed pain pills, which sadly led to a heroin addiction. Two weeks before Chandice's disappearance, Becky said she saw a change for the better in her daughter, the change she has been praying for. Chandice was fighting hard to stay clean. She was fighting to turn her life around for the first time in 10 years. Becky said, quote, I could see that she had gotten her will to live, and she was doing great. Her friends all said that. They said she was better off than they've seen her since she lost her brother, end quote. On August 20th, 2019, Becky came home and found a letter which she still has on her kitchen counter. It said, quote, Mom, I took off for a little while. I'm in good hands, I promise. Be back shortly. Please do not worry. No need to. Call if you need me, Chan. End quote. After that, Becky started the fight to bring her daughter back home. Christopher Spees, a man from Gilmer County, is who picked Chandice up that afternoon at her mom's home in Sutton, West Virginia, then went to the Birch River area of Nicholas County. Troopers believe that the two went there to sell drugs. It is believed that Chandice knew the Birch River area, but that Spees did not have a lot of connections there. The two end up at the house of Sam Kelly, Now, we just want to add here that Spies was more than just a drug dealer. He was a sex offender who did not feel the need to register himself as one. He had multiple warrants out for his arrest for this. Senior Trooper Caleb Harper said, They ended up at Kelly's house around midnight. Quote, That was around midnight. They were there for a while. They decided it was time to leave. End quote. Sam Kelly left his home to go to Gomart to get some cigarettes with his girlfriend, leaving Chandice and Christopher at his home alone. We aren't 100% sure how well they knew each other. When the two came back, they saw Chandice and Christopher leaving their home on foot, heading towards the fire department. Sam Kelly said that was the last time he saw them. However, to Christopher's memory, he can quote, kind of put her in the general area, end quote. Around 7 a.m. on August 21st, Christopher was seen walking along Widendale Road, just a few miles outside of the Birch River area. The person who saw him walking picked him up. Courtney, do you want to take a guess on who that person was? And um, was it just a random person? I'm not sure. It was actually Sam Kelly. Wait, What? The man who left him at his house? Yeah, that's the one. Sam told officers he just so happened to spot Christopher walking while Sam was on his way to work. 
He said that Christopher was alone and that Chandis was nowhere in sight. Trooper Caleb Harper said, quote, According to Mr. Spees, and what evidence I've been able to gather from her cell phone records, it appears that her cell phone died sometime around midnight or sometime after and was never powered back on, end quote. Since then, Krishra has been arrested on charges related to the disappearance of Chandis. He is serving time on convictions from Braxton, Lewis, and Nicholas County for Grand Laurency, attempt to commit Grand Laurency in the failure to register as a sex offender. Christopher has been interviewed by the West Virginia State Police several times. For one of those interviews, Becky Cochran was actually there. She said, quote, he went through everything, just the same thing he told the state police. When he got up to leave the room, I hollered at him, and I said, Spees, just tell me, is Chandis with us or not? He said, not. That's all he said, and just walked away quickly. In the weeks following Chandis' disappearance, extensive searches were conducted throughout Birch River and into the area that Spees was picked up. Trooper Harper said that him and Spees spent a few days together when he went to go re-interview him. Quote, it may have even been his idea to go over there and try to jog his memory. We spent several days together either talking or me driving him to Birch River and let him look at things and try to jog his memory. End quote. Harper said, quote, he can walk you up until 1 or 2 o'clock, and he can remember being picked up the next morning. The time in between is something he tells us he can't recall, end quote. Chandis's phone has never been found. However, a resident of Birch River did find her purse with her identification in the woods near Birch River not too long after her disappearance. Becky said the road to finding her daughter has been painful and confusing, but Becky said she will continue to travel it for the truth. Quote, In my heart, yes, I feel like she is still out there. Maybe I'm just hopeful thinking, but I do not feel a bad feeling in my heart. She said, maybe I'm wrong, but I have a lot of faith too, and I just have faith she is out there. End quote. And instead of us reading the letter to you, we've decided to let you listen to Becky read it. Hello, I am Becky Cochran, Chenis Cochran's mother. Chenis has been missing since August the 20th, 2019. As I read this, I am in Chenis's bedroom. Chenis's house coat is still hanging on the bedpost where she left it. It's never been moved. Her room is exactly like it was when she walked out of it. Christopher Spees came to our home and picked up Chanice the day she went missing. I was at work. Chanice left a note on the kitchen bar. It said, this note's been laying on the bar ever since she came up missing. It says, Mom, I took off for a little while. I'm in good hands, I promise. Be back shortly. Please, don't worry, no need to. Call me if you need to. Love you, Chan. Chandice was last seen with Christopher Spees at Birch River, West Virginia. Spees says he does not remember anything. I got to speak with Spees about six months ago. I asked Spees if Chandice was with us or not. Spees said not as he walked out of the room. In my heart, I believe Chanice is still with us. I have strong faith. That's what keeps me going. Chanice is all I have left. Speeds needs to be held accountable for Chanice's disappearance. Chanice, if you get to see this, you know you are missed in love beyond words. Please make it home safe. If anyone has any information, please call the West Virginia State Police at 304-765-2101. Thank you, heartbroken mother, Becky Cochran. 
please, if, if you have any, any information, please, please get a hold of us. This is a, a picture of Candace that yeah. I had posted and a reward offered for valuable information. Again, call 765-2101 or 304-765-2979. That's my phone number. Please help us, please. Thank you. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Chandis Cochran, please call the West Virginia State Police in Sutton, West Virginia at 304-765-2101. If you would like to do more than just listen to this episode, we have a call of action for you. In the show notes, we will link a petition for you to sign to give Chandis the justice she deserves. Courtney and I have both signed up. Courtney, do you have any final thoughts on this case? I feel it's another case that has been failed. Um, I mean, I feel that there's evidence out there. And I just feel that it hasn't been investigated the way that it needs to be investigated in. I feel Christopher Spees definitely knows what happened to Chandis and is not really wanting to actually say what happened to her but I mean he's already serving jail time I mean you know go ahead and confess to it right and you know I just wonder too if Sam Kelly actually knows what happens I never thought about that but yeah and it makes me wonder about his wife too I mean it just honestly makes you wonder I mean you can go out there, you can see somebody running, but during that time frame, what else is your alibi? What else were you doing at the time that you seen them running? If I seen a woman running from a man, I would definitely be trying to figure out what was going on and going after and see what was actually happening. Who knows if that was even the truth right there, that they were walking or whatever. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just sad all around and everything and it just honestly makes you wonder what happened to this poor girl i mean it was 2019 so ring cameras were a thing then right i think they were just starting to come out so i feel like people would have had them so i mean you think i mean they would definitely have security systems out there and i know some people actually have like cameras up and stuff and i mean especially if it's in the woods or something of that nature there could be hunting cameras up on like trail cams all this stuff up and everything and i just i feel that there's been an injustice served and that this hasn't been properly investigated into as to what we're coming to learn with about every single case that we cover you know that these cases are not covered that well in things mark do you have any final thoughts i wish i could say we found this case but in all honesty it found us we ended up getting a message on our facebook page and an email I actually texted Courtney, what was it, last week when I saw the email and I'm like, we need to cover this case as soon as possible. The more research I did on the case, the more it didn't make any sense to me. I hate that she said that she was in good hands to her mom when she wasn't and It makes my skin crawl knowing he was a sex offender and that he wouldn't register because God only knows what he could have done to her, let alone other people in that time frame. And I honestly question how well him and Sam Kelly knew each other because I know for a fact me and you would not let two people just stay in our house while we left. No, God no. Especially to go to Gomart, however far that is from his house, to get cigarettes, which it's just like if there was drugs in the house and they knew it, they could have stole them. Who's to say Sam Kelly could have, like, he could have done something to Chandis and is letting Christopher take all the blame for it and all of this because it's just, ugh. 
and how he can remember what happened before and after but not during the time of her going missing I've never done drugs I don't know about you no but I don't know how like you can just forget a small little period of time that something major happened and it just be so okay with everyone like I fully believe he knows what happened and I could go on and on about this case but I do want to say again for everyone listening please sign the petition and visit the Facebook page for Chandis like we said earlier we would we will have it in our show notes on this episode and we will link them in the Facebook post for this episode. This is something we can all help with. I'm not sure if there are other people out there like this, but I've always been the type of true crime consumer who I would not only just listen, watch, or read. I would always sign a petition if it was something I believed in, and I always wanted to find the answers to help solve a case. So now as a true crime podcaster, I believe we have the platform to do this to help solve cases and help get the truth out there for the families. Stay tuned for our next episode, which is the season finale of Mountain State Mysteries Season 2. If you find yourself enjoying Mountain State Mysteries, take a second to follow and rate it on your favorite podcast platform. It helps others find good West Virginia true crime podcasts. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, all at Mountain State Mysteries. Do you have a case you want us to cover? Email us at mountainstatemysteries304 at gmail.com. For the show notes, check out our website, mountainstatemysteriespodcast.com. Mm-hmm.